Thank you, team. All we are asking for is the rule of law. There are criminals everywhere. We have criminals in northern Kenya, be they drug dealers, uh, sympathizers of Al Shabaab, all kinds of criminals are there. But an MCA, a leader, who has been abducted for weeks, cannot be missing. If he's a criminal and there is sufficient evidence to pin him down, we expect that we request the government to bring him to the courts of law so that he can face justice. But he can't be missing a leader. If he's missing tomorrow, I'll be missing. I'm equally a leader. So we want the rule of law and the, uh, the just, criminal justice system to be functional, to convince all Kenyans that we have a reliable, dependable justice system. That is all we are asking for. It's not to condemn anybody, but the rule of law must always prevail. That aside, I think the Somali community or people of Northern Kenya have equally some responsibility on their part. Drugs are trying to ruin the Northern Kenyan communities. The Somali communities must up their game and fight all these uh, criminals. We must fight Al Shawab in our equal, in equal measure. We must give information. We must stop uh, those people who are doing business in these drugs. So it's not something only for the government. As much as we cry for justice, the Somali community must also take responsibility and push the frontiers of these criminal gangs and activities to wherever they have come from. That is something on our side too. Otherwise, the government shall never ex uh, escape any blame, be they al-Shabaab, drug barons, or any other form of criminality. They can't hold them in hiding, in estates in Nairobi, in Comunicado. All we need them is to avail them in 24 hours in our, in our courts. What they are trying to do is to torture these uh, people, torture them so that they can produce the juice out of them. I don't know what kind of information they are looking forward to. People are being tortured so that they can give evidence, and that is not the way. The judiciary, our judges are well trained to make sure that they can get the best through cross-examinations and convict people accordingly. But not the security apparatus trying to use an orthodox means to get out information. I myself, one person has been killed in Wajir North, two are still missing. I don't know where they are. Are they in Somalia, in Ethiopia, or in Kenya, where? So like we have uh, the infamous Gautama Bay kind of, Gautama Bay kind of, in Kenya. Many cells belonging to the security apparatus. People are being hidden. The anti-terrorist team, and as much as we appreciate their work, they are a terror group, a terror group for sure. The multi-sectoral team, nobody can take responsibility. The intelligence tell you it's not us, it is this other sector. I mean, we can't have multi-sectoral team that has no regard for law. We have the Kenya Police Service, we have the DCI, simple. The rest, I don't know what these are multi-sectoral thing. Even KWS may be involved, you can imagine. What will a ranger do in, in combating crime? So uh, we are back to 80s. Back to 80s. We can't allow that. This must stop. Thank you. <laughs> Mine is Kenya is governed by the rule of law. Our constitution is based on the rule of law and democracy. We cannot allow this to happen at this era. My message goes directly to the President of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. His Excellency William Samoy Ruto. During last term, he served under a government that was abducting leaders left, right, and center. And we thought 
and still believe he is the hope for Kenyans to stop that act. It has been rampant in the recent past in northern Kenya. Leaders have been abducted, uh, members of the public. How safe are Kenyans if a leader can be abducted in a broad daylight? Is a question we need to ask the security apparatus in this country. We don't know where the honorable member is. The family are under distress. The entire voters of Dela Wood are also stressed. We don't know his whereabouts. We want the government to come out and tell us where the honorable MCA is. They cannot take the rule of law in their hands. Kenya is not a republic, a banana republic. We have a constitution. We have three arms of government that have separation of powers. We have our courts that we believe in. If somebody is suspected to be a criminal, he should be brought to the court of law and justice be served. Mine is again to ask the president to kindly act on this one because leaders cannot be away, cannot be abducted. And tomorrow it can be me, it can be a governor, it can be somebody else. We are not going to take this simple. And uh, as Honorable Member said, we are going to take it far. This cannot happen in Kenya in a broad daylight. Thank you. Thank you so much, members of the board. I wish to join my colleagues. My name is Abbas Mohammed, the Senator for Wajia. Um, I wish to join my colleagues. And follow suit that uh, Honorable Yusuf, the MC for Dela, has been missing for the last five days. Constitutionally, I think, uh, if at all, somebody has been held by the security apparatus, it's supposed to be I mean, produ uh, produced court, in court within 24 hours. And therefore, we want to appeal to anybody, all the security apparatus, to produce Yusuf to court. If he's a criminal, the court will take his course. Uh, if, and if I say again, if Honorable Yusuf has not been held by any of the, the security apparatus, then it is the responsibility of the government to seek and look for Yusuf as every Kenyan has a right to, uh, and properties are to be protected. The people and their properties are to be protected, protected. And therefore, if Yusuf is not in the hands of the security apparatus, we will request the same same uh, security officers uh, to take uh, quick action and investigate the war about Yusuf and produce because his family is actually now tortured and you know have sleeping in last night. If it's within our uh, within the, 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 the within the the, the security uh, holding them, I mean the security is holding him, then let him be produced or let him be given information. Keeping somebody in Komakudo is not uh, the right thing that should be done. Yusuf has a right for representation. Yusuf has a right to be, to be uh, informed whatever is a problem. With those few remarks, I want to appeal again that Honorable Yusuf, the MCA of Odela, shall not be missing in more days. Whether he's dead or alive, let us know what, where he's what about. With those few remarks, I want to thank the members. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm here to join my colleagues of the same. This is a trend which has been happening mostly in northern Kenya. Uh, not only for the member of county assembly. This is a leader who has been elected. And if there is anything, if, if a leader is not safe, then who else is safe in this country? One can wonder. Secondly, there is the issue about people are talking about if it's not with the government, the, the member of the county assembly, if it's not with the gov government, is not holding him. Why are we questioning? Because the responsibility of the lives and security of everybody vests on the government of Kenya, nobody else. So we have no doubt if this guy would have been adopted, uh, adopted somewhere in Wajia, one may even doubt that this could be Al Shabaab or anything like that. But in the heart of the country, Kenya, in Nairobi, you have no any other to blame, but it's the government now to produce this person, either take him to court. I have already from my, my solo county, 
three of the young boys have been abducted and they are nowhere to be seen for the last three months. So how, where are we going? Seriously. What are we doing? Are we in control? What is this? Are this like my colleague was saying? Is it really are these terror groups or something like that? What are we doing? So is something serious? And we stand up and say no to some of this. Government should produce the MCA, I think, in the quickest possible time, so that it can be taken to court for the parents to avoid the more problems with the parents of the of the of the deceased. Thank you. This ingratious abduction constitutes a grave violation of the fundamental rights enshrined in our constitution. In particular Article 29 guarantees every citizen the right to freedom and security, including protection from arbitrary detention. This blatant disregard of constitutional protection strikes, strikes at the very core of our democratic society. Such violations cannot and will not be tolerated. The perpetrators of such acts must be brought to justice. Acts of kidnapping and arbitrary arrest. Acts of kidnapping, arbitrary arrest, and illegal confinement are not merely personal affronts. They are crimes against the state and a direct threat to the rule of law, which forms the foundation of our democracy. And any action that undermines it erodes the fabric of our society. No individual, regardless of the status of power, is above the law. We stand united in resisting any attempts to weaken the legal framework that protects our freedom. Criminal responsibility is an individual. Where an individual is suspected, that individual must be subjected to the rule of law and subjected to the due process of law. That is the only way we can all be accountable to the rule of law and cherish our democracy. The reported matter in our case sparks great public concern, underscoring the urgent need for enhanced security measures for both public officials and ordinary citizens. It's a unanimous call to the government to take immediate and decisive steps to restore public confidence by ensuring the safety and the security of all Kenyans. The state has constitutional duty to protect its citizens, and any failure in this regard is unjustified, flawed, and unacceptable. While underscoring the mandate of our security law enforcement agencies as unequivocally outlined in the National Police Service Act. The police are tasked with maintaining law and order and preserving peace, protecting the life and property, and enforcing the laws of the land. In this instance, the responsibility rests squarely with the CID, the police, and all other security agencies to ensure to firmly uphold this mandate by conducting a thorough, transparent, and swift investigation. The credibility of this institution is aptly at stake, and their response will test the commitment to the rule of law. Since the hijacking and the unfortunate disappearance of the MCA has ignited public, uh, widespread public outrage, intensifying the demand for clear answers, swift and decisive action, the continued silence to death, even after reporting, and this being a state officer, being an elected officer. To date, no official communication has come out from the investigative agencies. This depends our fear and frustration. Any further delay risks eroding public trust in our security operators, and government must decisively act to restore this critical component of our governance structure. It's, a strong, it's our strong message to the relevant government agencies to provide timely and transparent update on the investigation process. The lack of information is full in fear and uncertainty. The authorities must reassure the public that every necessary measure is being taken to resolve this case swiftly and justly. If there are legitimate grounds for detaining Honorable Yusuf, due process must be followed. It should be presented before a court of law in line with the principles of natural justice the rule of law, and constitutional grounds without prejudice or compromise. Legal institutions, if any, should be resolved in the courts, through, in the courts, not through clandestine operations like what the MCA and many other people have been subjected to in the recent past. This criminal act is not, only, is not just 
an attack on an individual, but a fragrant assault on the principle of justice and security that brings together the fabric of our nation. As we stand united in condemning this heinous violation, we are also reminded of the critical importance of safeguarding the fundamental rights of every citizen, regardless of his status. The courts are the ultimate guardian of justice in our democracy, and they play a critical responsibility in addressing any issues involving police arrest. Such matters must be resolved through the courts, ensuring that the rights of the accused are also protected, and justice is promptly served. The independence and integrity of the judiciary are paramount in ensuring there is fairness and transparency in the allocation of the rule of law. As we advocate for justice, we also stand in unwavering solidarity with Yusuf's family and the people of Delaware, and by extension, the people of Eldas and Wajia County and Kenyans in general. And our message to the abductors is Kenya is a nation governed to the abductors, whoever they are. Our message is Kenya is a nation governed by laws. No one is above the law. Intimidation and violence have no place in our society. And finally, we urgently call upon the Office of the Inspector General and all the relevant government agencies to widen their scope of investigation and expedite the search for Honorable Yusuf and by extension prioritize his immediate recovery. <coughs> Those responsible for this area act must be swiftly apprehended and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. We will not rest until Honorable Yusuf is severely returned or produced before a court of law if there is any evidence. We also continue to urge all Kenyans to remain vigilant and demand unwavering accountability from our security agencies. Upholding the rule of law is the bedrock of our democracy, and we must all stand united to ensure its restoration and the maintenance of public order. Thank you. Colleagues? Kenya is not a banana republic. It is a country that is supposed to be governed by the rule of law. And as far as we are concerned, the Constitution of Kenya has not been suspended. And what we are asking as uh, people from the region, fellow colleagues of Honorable Yusuf of Dela Ward, we say if there is any Kenyan from any part of this country who has been found or suspected to have done something wrong, anything wrong, wrong in law, then he should be subjected to the processes that are well established in the laws of this country, processes that are well established in the constitution of this country, processes that uh, give the accused or whoever is suspected uh, the fair hearing and, and fair judgment. We are not saying that uh, those people are suspected of having any anything to do with the breaking the law. We are not trying to protect anybody here. But we are saying if anybody is guilty of anything, or if anybody is suspected of anything, then they should be subjected to the due process of law. It has been anguish, and it has been sorrow in the region for a long time now. When you find your relatives, your friends, your constituents disappear without trace. Recently in my constituency in Mandela South, one of our constituents, who is also a relative in a way, disappeared for the last three years. And we had to, you know, we didn't know how to do, how to, how to, how to perform the closure for the family of that, of that person. And we had to re re resort to uh, uh, religious, you know, ruling on that. What happens if somebody has disappeared for three years? You don't know whether he's alive, you don't know whether he's dead. We had to perform some rituals to give closure to that family. And we don't want families from Northeastern or any part of this country to be subjected to this uh, every now and then. These abductions and disappearances have been happening uh, since uh, before even the Constitution 2010. And the trend has continued even after uh, the, we have enacted the, the, the Constitution 2010. And, and that is why we are saying, let Kenyans be subjected to the rule of law. Anybody who suspected of uh, having done anything wrong should be arraigned in law, in court, in a, in a court of law. And if, 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 if the judges and the evidence available shows that that person should be hung, so be it. 
but but this 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 psychological war of the people from this region, you know, making disappearances. Women have disappeared, children have disappeared, young men have disappeared, elderly people have disappeared, and and extrajudicially some of them ex executed. And this is what we are saying should not happen in the modern day the Kenya, when we are boasting one of the best constitutions in the world. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, mine is to add into what my colleagues have said. Uh, this is an issue that used to be there with, with the last government, but we thought it has ended uh, with uh, the 2022 general elections. Immediately after the elections, the current president abolished even the, the, the unit that was dealing with this kind of, you know, uh, abductions, kidnappings, that happened even to the government employees. I remember it happened to them, the chiefs, it happened to teachers, it happened to health workers, it happened to so many people. After being held for seven, eight months, I remember of a chief that was just thrown into the bush while he was completely out. You know, this has been happening with the, with the last government. But after the swearing in of the current president, His Excellency William Samoy Ruto, he gave an, a, a statement himself. He abolished the unit. It has really, you know, it has been halted for few, I think, few months, but it came back. This thing is now uh, with us. So many people are missing. Uh, other than the elected leader, we have so many civilians that are missing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the statements are all over in the police stations. Unfortunately, now it came to the leaders. We are, we, are, we are missing an MCA. Tomorrow it will come to the members of parliament. It will, it will come to the governors. It will come to the senators. We cannot accept this kind of you know, uh, issues happening in our country. We cannot accept at all. We gave this scenario to the president 21st uh, August last, last month. We gave the president this issue. Few days later, I think around four people were released meaning the president must have acted. What we want the government to do, starting from the president, is to make sure this issue is approached so that this issue does not happen anymore. We want the release of this MCA as quickly as possible. 90% it is in the hands of the government. It is in the hands of our security agents. Because by now, dead or alive, we could have known where, he, where, where this MCA is. We want the release of this MCA, and we want this issue to be, uh, to be halted. This issue needs to be stopped, and we want a commission of inquiry formed by the president himself. We are calling upon the government to form an, a commission of inquiry to tell, the, to, to tell the public and Kenyans at large why this issue is happening and why this issue has not been followed. We want the government to call back all those people that have been released, including the chiefs, so that they can give, you know, the, uh, why, the, the history of what has happened to them. We cannot just leave this, leave this thing open. It has to be stopped. We need to have information. Kenya needs to have the required information so that, so that we don't undergo these kind of issues. No one is safe, including the media guys. You are not safe. You are not safe, and we cannot accept this. As members of parliament, we are the mouthpiece of Kenyans. We are the mouthpiece of Kenyans, and we have to talk for all of you. We cannot accept, and we will raise it in the floor, or the floor. We are going to give statements. We will not stop it here. We want the government to tell us with the whereabouts of the Mishimiwa. This is somebody that has been elected by, uh, by Kenyans, and his whereabout is worrying us. We want the government to give a statement today over the whereabouts of the MCA. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Okay.
Thank you so much, members of the Father State. I think we, we said up to 3.30, so we are still 10 minutes to the time. Thank you. Where is the... Where is the... Thank you. 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 Thank you.